Hey guys, welcome back to this tutorial on power system network design. This is tutorial number seven, part seven B. Now in the previous tutorial, which is part A, we calculated the tripping time for relay number four. Now relay number four is looking out for the fault on bus bar five. As we can see, there is a current of 2.1 kilo amps. Now the same relay number four must also trip in case there is there is a fault on bus bar four, that is 2.2 slightly higher. Now because this is a downstream arrangement, so we're working from the bottom up. So the relay, the last relay in this arrangement must have the lowest tripping time then the first relay that is close to the power source okay so now in this tutorial we're going to continue with relay number three because we've already calculated the time multiplier setting and we already calculated the actual tripping time for relay four either when there is a fault on bus bar five or bus bar four now, before I continue, I'd like to highlight the procedures in which to calculate this tripping time. As you have seen in the previous tutorial for relay four, we first calculated M, which is the multiple of setting current. After calculating that, we then calculate the TC, okay, which is the operating time of the relay. Now, after calculating that, we then calculate the TMS, which is the time multiplier settings. Now, from that, we then go on and calculate the actual tripping time of the relay. So, this is how you go about. So, you cannot start by calculating TMS or TC because you first need M before you calculate TC and from TC, you can get either TMS and also calculate TA. Now, because relay 4 is the first relay to trip when there is a fault on bus bar 5, so we assume that that relay must trip within 0.4 seconds. Now 0.4 seconds, we explain that it comes from the grading margins. Okay? Now, that is the standard discriminations. And then from that 0.4, we then calculated TMS of uh, that relay for a fault on bus bar 4, which we got the value of 0, 0, 0092. And from there, we could then calculate the ta for bus bar 4 which we got a value of 0387 seconds now continuing we're now going to move on to relay number three now for relay number three the first thing to do is then to calculate for a fault on bus bar 4 so that is now this relay here which got a plug setting of 200 percent and the CT is 201 compared to this one that's got a CT ratio of 250 to 1 and the plug setting of 175%. So now we move to relay 4, looking out for the fault on bus bar 4 that is 2.2 kilo amp. So now, now as we've already illustrated here, the first thing to calculate is to calculate M. M is given by the following formula that is I fault divided by the CT ratio times RN times your plug settings now we already know everything in our formulas there is no unknown value so we can just go ahead and replace so we find an m that is equal to 5.651 that is the multiple of current settings now from there we can then calculate tc which is the operating time now tc for the standard characteristics curve we got tc that is 3 over log m and we found the value of 4 seconds. The next thing to do is then to calculate TMS, the time multiplier setting. Now TMS is given by TA divided by TC. We already know TC, but we don't know TA. But we know that TA, for every relay, there is a 0.4% standard discrimination for the grading margin that is added to the relay. But because there was a previous TA that we calculated for a fault on bus bar 4 that is now 0387 second. 
So we need to add that 0, 0,38 second to the 0 0.4 standard discrimination. So we then get a TA of 0, 0,787. Now, that is to ensure that if there is a fault on this bus bar, this relay here, R3, must not trip before relay 4 trip. Because if relay 3 trip before relay 4, that is now defeating this relay 4. Because if this part of the circuit does not have a problem, there is a problem on this part, so R4 should trip. This is why we're adding that standard discrimination, that grading margin, to the TA of relay 4 on bus bar 4 to ensure exactly that that relay got a slightly higher tripping time. So then we find that TA and then we can then calculate our TMS, that is TA over TC. So we find now a TMS of 0, 0,1. Nine seven. Are you following me, guys? Please pay attention because this is exactly the procedure you do to determine this tripping time. If you follow the procedure carefully, there is no room for error and you're not going to make mistakes. So you're going to get your full mark. Now we move on to the next one. So that is the same relay, but this time we want to look for the fault on bus bar 3. Okay, before we go any further, please, guys, hit the like button and the subscribe button that all i'm asking subscribe to simtech channel so i can keep doing this tutorial then i know there are people out there who want more tutorial like this hit the subscribe button now and the like button thank you very much okay so now moving forward we then calculate m so our m here will then be 1.6 kilo m divided by 200 times 1 times 2 and that is equal to 4.19 and then from there we can then calculate tc tc will give us a time of 4.82 seconds so that is our operating time for that relay 3 for a fault on bus bar 3 okay so the next thing then since we already determined m we need now to calculate for relay 3 on the fault on bus bar 3 so that TMS is then equal to same formula TA divided by TC. And then we can then go ahead since we already know TMS of the previous fault. So you must follow the procedure because where are you going to get this TMS? You get this TMS, the same TMS that you calculated when you were doing that same relay but for a fault on bus bar 4. That's a TMS you're going to use now to calculate the TA now for that same relay for a photon bus bar 3. So that gives us a time of 0, 0,95 seconds. So that is now the answer for TA, the actual tripping time for relay 3 for a photon bus bar 3 will then be slightly under 1 second. So we've done now with relay 3 for the fault on either bus bar 3 or bus bar 4. So we now move into relay 2. So relay 2, we also need to calculate for a fault on bus bar 3 first and then on bus bar 2. So there we go, relay 2 for a fault on bus bar 3. So we calculate M and then we get the value exactly the same because we have the same plug setting and the same CT ratio. So nothing is going to change here. We got exactly the same TC of 4,82 seconds. Now we move on to calculate now TMS. So we have to also add a 0.4 standard discrimination. This is to prevent that this relay trip first before this relay. So we do that and then we got a TA of 1.35 seconds. And from there we can calculate our TMS. TMS is then equal to 0.28. Okay, so that's a time multiplier settings for relay 2 on the fault for bus bar 3. Now remember, we're going to use this TMS value to calculate the TA for the same relay, but this time when the fault is going to be on bus bar 2. So moving on, we know that TMS for bus bar 3 is equal to 0, 0,28. Now we move to the next one. So that is now going to be for relay 2 for a fault on bus bar 2 since we already calculated 
relay 2 for a fault on bus bar 3. We then need to calculate for a fault on bus bar 2. Please guide, pay attention to the procedure as illustrated here. We know that we need to calculate first MTC TMS TA. But keeping in mind that every time you have to calculate TA, you have to use TMS of the previous one. So every time you have to calculate TMS, you have to use TA of the previous bus bar fault and you have to add TA of the grading margin so that you can get a higher actual tripping time. Okay, so now let's move on and calculate M for the relay 2 for a fault on bus bar 2. So we know that bus bar 2, the fault is that uh, 1.7 kilo amps. So we replace the value and then we find 4.36. And then we can then deduce our TC for the standard characteristics curve. That is equal to then 4.69 seconds. Basically 4.7 seconds. Okay. Now from here we then go ahead and calculate TMS as we have discussed. So TMS is TA over TC. Remember these formulas because they don't give you the formula sheet. But you have to remember the procedures. But then remember here TMS. So you already have TC, but where do you get this TMS? TMS is a previous TMS that you calculated for relay 2 when you were dealing with the fault on bus bar 3. And we saw that on the previous uh, slide, we saw that that value we calculated was 0, 0,28. Okay, so you have to then multiply that TMS value times your TC to get now your new TA for this relay. And you can clearly see that this TA is equal to 1.31 seconds. So TA for relay 2 for a fault on bus bar 2 is equal to 1.31 seconds. Please pay attention guys. Okay, so now we've done with relay 2 for both the fault on bus bar 2 and bus bar 3. So now we move on to relay 1. Now, just like we've done for relay 2, we've calculated for the fault on either one of the bus bar. Now, we have to do the same for relay 1, for the fault on bus bar 2, and for the fault on bus bar 1. So, we first start for the fault on bus bar 2, as we've done previously. So, relay 1 for the fault on bus bar 2. Procedure. So, we must first calculate M. Our M is given by the same formula. We replace the values. We can see that the photon bus bar 2 is 1.7 kilo amps. Okay. And then we get a value of 4,36. It's exactly the same value there. From there, we can then calculate TC since we already found the value of M. And then we can then replace. So our TC here will be equal to 4,69 seconds. Okay. It's exactly the same TC as there because this relay and this relay, they have exactly the same plug setting. So we are calculating from the same fault on bus bar 2. Okay, so you get exactly the same thing. Now, the next thing then here is to calculate TMS. Okay, so TMS, as we know, is TA over TC. But remember to add the 0, 0,4 standard discrimination. Okay, then that gives a value of TA. That is equal to 0, 0,4 plus 1.31 seconds. 1.31 second, that is this one. That we calculated for relay 2 for the fault on bus bar 2. This one. Because remember, we are also now calculating the TMS for relay 1 for the fault on bus bar 2. So we have to use the TA that we calculated when we were calculating for relay 2. For the photon bus bar 2. That's the procedure guys. So you just following section by section. This is how protections is provided when you use IDMT relay with grading margins in a differential protection setup. Okay. So now we can go ahead and calculate our TMS that is now equal to 0, 0,375. Now remember this TMS. You're going to use this TMS to calculate the TA for the same relay, but this time when you calculate for the fault on bus bar 1. Okay, so we move on. Relay 1 for the fault on bus bar 1. 
we calculate m notice that's now the fault on bus bar one that is the 1.8 kilo amps so we get 4.55 for m and then we calculate tc that is 4.56 and then with our tc we can then go ahead and calculate ta because tms is ta over tc so ta is equal to tms times tc so we have tc we should also have tms that is 0.375 there so we can just replace so we find a ta of 1.71 seconds so you can clearly see there is a there is a grading margin difference here we then find a ta on bus bar one for relay one of 1.71 seconds now as you can see from the very first relay relay four with the fault on bus bar four there was a 0 0.4 second for the grading margin we have now the last relay here is going to trip for a fault on bus bar one on a time of 1.71 seconds now why are these time not the same because let's say there is a fault on this bus bar and if this relay here fell to trip within 0 0.4 seconds this one is going to trip if this one fell to trip this one is going to trip if this one fell to trip it's r2 and within 1.7 seconds r1 is going to trip and cut off the whole power because if there is a short circuit here there will be a higher current that is going to start flowing so all of these relays are going to see that something is not uh, right so the power is going to trip so that is how protection is uh, ensured in this five bus bar downstream arrangement okay and for most national electrical standard and regulations this tripping time must be less than two seconds so it cannot be over two seconds that is too much of a time a lot of things can already start burning so it happened very fast but if there is a fault somewhere along a bus bar one and it happened instantaneously and it struck the circuit so that is how this bus bar arrangement is done so guys don't forget to subscribe to simtech channel and give the thumbs up to this tutorial and please stay tuned and come back for more tutorial like this i thank you cheers